It's a prototype of the Army's first mobile nuclear power plant, a major technological advance in the military application of nuclear power. Like all of the Army's nuclear power plants, its principal reason for existence is to reduce the burden of providing petroleum fuels in areas which, for military, geographical, or political reasons, are difficult and at times almost impossible to support logistically. So the Pentagon recently released an update to an ongoing project that's started a little bit of controversy in some circles. Mobile nuclear reactors or micro-reactors. Back in 2018, the Army G4 released a report calling for a look at these micro-nuclear reactors or creating prototypes of them to basically fuel and provide energy for forward operating bases. Now even though we're kind of out of the forward operating base game with COIN and counterterrorism in Iraq and Afghanistan, there are going to be situations in which different kind of basing and different kind of operations and missions will call for more austere areas to be used and may not have easy supply lines to ports or to other ways to get logistics to them. In the past 20 years, a big vulnerability of those forward operating bases was their supply line. It provided ways for enemies to attack the supply line via air or ground and also reduced the ability and the, of, of that forward operating base to be effective in a combat environment. And fuel is no small issue for the military for providing energy. The U.S. military, the Department of Defense, uses 10 million gallons of fuel every day, year in, year out. So any reduction in that can be a help as a logistical burden and also for cost. So the program calls for a reactor that has passive cooling, is under 40 tons, can be transported by a C-17 aircraft, provides between 1 and 10 megawatts of power, and has an emergency shutoff. Now when it was first released, it was called Project Dilithium. Essentially, that's a nod or a reference to the Star Trek fuel source, a fictional fuel source, by the way, for warp drives to provide warp speed in a Star Trek movie and TV series. The new project name is Project Pale or Project Pele, and essentially is going to have two companies competing with prototypes in the coming year to create this specific nuclear reactor. In 2021, two companies were downselected by the DoD, that's BWXT Advanced Technologies and X Energy LLCs. They'll be providing some kind of a prototype of this reactor, likely in the next year. Now that 2018 Army report did identify some areas or locations across the globe where the Army is now that could use these micro-reactors. So could be coming to a base near you sometime soon. Those included Thule, Greenland, Kawajanel Atoll, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, Diego Garcia, Guam, Fort Buchanan, Puerto Rico, Camp Bering, Kuwait, Fort Greeley, Alaska, and Lajia Field, Azores. So most of these are on island outposts or far extreme areas such as parts of Alaska or say a part of Puerto Rico that maybe doesn't have a good infrastructure for power supply. Now, this is not without its critics. A professor at the University of Texas, Austin in 2021 put out a pretty scathing report calling this entire project a, a basically a waste of time, waste of resources and dangerous. He cited high costs, uh, missile vulnerability for these reactors, the possibility that reactor, reactors could be captured by enemy um, that high energy weapons such as lasers don't actually need reactors to run just due to the way that they draw power, use power throughout their cycle of life in a daily cycle of operations, that there's not really a defined mission for these reactors, and there's a big transportation problem and vulnerability for an aircraft, say, crashing with a reactor or a reactor being intercepted by enemy in route to a location. And that report from that University of Texas professor is not alone. Just a few years before that, in 2019, when this really first became public, the um, Nuclear Safety Project for the Union of Concerned Scientists issued its own report rebutting what the findings of the Army G4 report were and whether or not this was even necessary or safe. Now there's a little history here. The Army did have small reactors located at different facilities out throughout the 1960s and 70s. Some of those locations included Sundance, Wyoming from 1962 to 68, um, Camp Century Greenland from 61 to 64, McMurdo Base Antarctica from 62 to 67. There was even one in the Panama Canal Zone. There was a 1960 fatal accident that killed three operators at a plant in Idaho that was using one of these reactors. And that's one of those things people point to for the safety concerns about the reactors. Those supporters of the program say new designs are much safer, more energy efficient, and do not have the same problems of the, of the decades old reactors that were used in past programs. So controversy or no controversy, the Pentagon seems to be pushing ahead with this project. It's got environmental statement and impacts to gather for this next year, some more prototyping and design work to be approved, but there could be a mini nuclear reactor powering a FOB sometime in the next five to 10 years if this program is successful. Because nuclear power plants require no petroleum, and as you shall see, may eventually create petroleum substitutes in the field, the Army's problem of supplying fuel for its mechanized forces may soon be solved.